All right. Well, thanks for uh, for joining us today. I'm Scott Cuthbert, co-founder of Safepedia, and uh, with me is Corey Pitzer, founder and CEO of SafeMap International. So, uh, welcome, Corey. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, and and you know, we we've been working together for for quite a while, and and we wanted to use this opportunity to to maybe take a couple steps back and and um, you know explain who is uh, SafeMap. And uh, and what uh, you know what what your focus is? Yeah, so SafeMap, um, we've been around quite a long time. Um, I started SafeMap in uh, in Australia actually in 1994 after I worked for a big mining company um, which is today known as BHP. Uh, I worked in the South African uh, part of it before they merged with the Australian company and I was the group risk manager for this organization called Gencor at the time and I started there with a different focus on safety um, we had a big disaster in this company a mining disaster 170 people killed on the ground with a fire and the organization was obviously shocked to their roots and I have just completed reading the book of Edward Deming. This is in the late 80s. And I started with a process on each of the mines, so that 60 mines in the company, that today is basically a hop process. It was called the Gencore Safety Performance Review. And it looked at the organization's culture. It looked at the organization's human performance management systems. And there was a week long activity for each on each of the mines. Two days, we had teams coming in and looking at serious injury, fatal risks. Um, and then three days, we had this hop process. But before this, we had um, a process where we would conduct culture surveys of the employees. And that would become part of the, the management process on those three days. Uh, and, uh, and that's where the whole idea of culture analysis focus for me came from. So I resigned from this company, started SafeMap in Australia uh, in 1994, and then I moved to Vancouver in 2008. And since then, I have developed a range of uh, companies uh, that are partners of SafeMap around the world. So we have a big stretch around the world, uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, and Africa, where we basically uh, focus on two areas. One is the human performance culture analysis, and the other one is risk map, which is serious injury and fatal risk focus. And, and that's our, uh, our uh, two businesses that have got these two adjacent focuses. And most of our uh, partners around the world are either in the world of psychology or in the world of engineering. And so we we successfully marrying and merging these two approaches into uh, the safe map approach uh, overall. So we've got a range of clients around the world. We've got a lot of clients in uh, in the United States and Canada, and also in, in Europe and Asia. And uh, we have been uh, working in this field of of. Uh, safety culture transformation now for, for, for many, many years, 30 years in total. So that's safe map. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's quite a, quite a journey and, and obviously, uh, you know, ton of, uh, ton of experience and, and great customers and, and a, a network that comes along with working with, with safe map. And I know one of the things that, um, you and I have talked about over the last few years is, um, you know, just looking at the, at the the customer list, there's a lot of big names there that that people would recognize. But you've also broken this down in in very manageable bite sized pieces. So so small medium sized organizations in in different industries could also access this uh, this uh, platform and and approach that you're talking about today. Yeah, yeah, we have nearly two thousand companies, large and small, on our database that. We on our culture benchmarking database, yeah. Um, which um, you know, which companies can benchmark themselves against. 
yeah, just didn't want to scare anybody away with, uh, with some of those impressive uh, names on the on the screen there. So w when we're talking about culture surveys, like what what's the objective of of conducting a survey? Um, so there's a, a number of objectives, uh, and some for me more important than others, if I could put it like that. But there are the first three is it's to, to, to assess employee engagement and trust in the organization, which is the starting point of all, um, of all cultures, if I can put it like that. Um, you know, we, we have, and I'll show you a little bit later, the, the methodology, which is important. But from these assessments, we can identify the strengths and weaknesses in an organization's culture, uh, which initiates for the organization systemic improvements. If you don't know where you are, you cannot uh, identify where you want to be in the most simplest of terms. Yet most organizations are, maybe not most, many organizations are busy with all kinds of busyness in safety without knowing what is the current state of play, in, especially in the field of their culture, how people perceive their organizations. And this is a very important starting point is to benchmark yourself against industry and also to benchmark yourself against yourself. Because if you've done a startup survey in, and you then went through a series of systemic improvements, you want to know what and how it is working, to what extent. And you can then benchmark yourself against your own baseline survey. Uh, but the most important benchmarking, I think, is, is to be able to benchmark against um, the industry. And I'll show you some of the, the ways in which that could be done. And then this is, to me, the most important one, to measure true safety capabilities. Uh, we hear a lot about safety is not the absence of accidents, safety is the presence of capacity. Yeah. Um, and what, how do you know what is capacity? What is that capability that you have in an organization or what you don't have? And way upstream in the organization is your operational plans, your operational intent, your operational systems, which is driven, influenced, modified by the culture in the organization. What you set out to do has an effect on people's perceptions, which then has an effect on how you execute your, your, your transformation. So this is to me a, a very powerful measurement of your true safety capabilities that goes beyond uh, measurement of, uh, of, of outcomes uh, in the organization. So a very important part of that is what I call the science of risk. Um, and it is, you heard a lot about safety culture. We, we, we prefer the term, alternative term of risk culture. And we want to distinguish those and there's two there's two two angles on this. One is the the safety culture, and that is what I call the noise in the organization. What you hear, what you see, what people are telling you openly when you ask them, "What do you think of management? Or how does management approach this or that?" They will tell you what they think you want to hear, uh, and they're very reluctant to tell you what you don't want to hear. And that is what I call the risk culture. It is the silence in the organization. And it's that silence in the organization that you, that you really have to understand and have a hand on and have a metric about. Now, how do you measure the silences in the organization? If you give people a questionnaire, a Likert scale, one to five, agree, disagree on these statements, you're not measuring the silences in the organization because you are telling people, here's the questionnaire, and they now start to figure out what do you want to know? Because quite often they're, uh, they're not quite sure that you know who's answering the questionnaire, even though you have got the, oh, it's all anonymous and confidential, but you've sent this to my email address. Uh, so the moment you start doing those things, you are killing the silence in the organization. People will not tell you that. But we've devised a methodology that we have patented in the United States uh, and elsewhere, where we're able to access what people are not willing to tell you. And I'd say this in simplistic terms. 
But there are three methods in which we do this. The one on the right is the normal web-based surveys. You send this to a person's email and they answer the questions. But even there, we have a unique methodology. You do not have time to figure out what the answer should be. We do not use Likert scales. We use simple statements and people simply agree or disagree with those. And there's a timeout on every statement so they can't think about the answer. That's when people are much dispersed in, uh, in location, we use that method. We can also use what we call Prisma Voice, where the statements are actually read out into, uh, the, uh, into, the, into the platform. So people click on this through a QR code and they listen to statements and then they respond, I agree or disagree. But this one on the left, which we call Prisma Ears, is the most trusted one, the most valid way to do this. We do this in group sessions where people get these uh, electronic audience response system. That's what EAR stand for. And people simply respond by pressing buttons on statements that the facilitator reads to them. No one knows who's pressing the buttons. No one has got any information about anybody. And we access the real, real perceptions, the, the, the intuitive responses of people in a survey like this. So that's how we, that's how we uh, gain access to this field, uh, Scott. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's definitely, if not the one of the most, you know, objective ways to uh, to collect that information. And, and like you said before, when a lot of other surveys, people kind of get an understanding of what management's looking for, and then they have a tendency to answer in a favorable way versus in an honest, uh, honest way. And and uh, I know your approach um, really, really eliminates those sorts of uh, those sorts of answers, um, you know, so that you are getting to to the truth of what's going on within your within your organization. So, when we're conducting the uh, the surveys, what what is it that we're measuring? So that probably what, what I would call the scope of, of culture. And uh, that's a, a depiction of the, a three-dimensional focus on, on culture. And the first one is the cultural maturity. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit about that in a moment. The next one is the cultural coupling. And the third one is the cultural capacity. Um, so what is maturity, coupling, and capacity? And, and this is related to our uh, to the name of Prisma that sits behind us. Now, the maturity in the organization is to what extent is the culture on a scale of maturity visible? So you can have a low maturity uh, organization, and you know all these Bradley curves and uh, shell uh, models, uh, we use those to develop a safe map one, which distinguishes in between two groups of maturity. One is where the focus of the organization is purely on outcome, purely on results. We want to achieve a low accident rate. Uh, that's a low maturity organization. A high maturity organization is an organization that believes they do safety for the right reasons. They take care of people. They, safety is a value for them in the organization because it's a value of care. That's a high maturity organization. So we have a questionnaires that we developed from the uh, INPO uh, model, which is the in Institute of Nuclear Power Organizations. We use their cultural model to measure the organization's maturity. We measure the organization's capacity or strength and that is um, the, uh, a model that we've developed over, over 30 years now with 30 factors, uh, positive, negative distribution of, of, of questions. So uh, people, we measure how positive and negative people are towards the organization's leadership, systems, etc. And then there's the one of alignment. It's a bit of a more recent idea. How tightly or loosely coupled are the various levels of the organization or the various uh, horizontally spread departments. And we measure this through a, a, a analysis of the uh, internal correlation of responses, the response patterns. 
Um, and a simple example is an organization that is tightly coupled. You would have a high degree of congruence between what management feels and says, supervisors, middle management, and the front line employees. Uh, a, a loosely coupled organization you would have very different views, diff different patterns of responses. And that is also a, a dimension that's not often measured in organizations these days or has never been much of a focus, but that's the three areas. We also measure psychological safety, uh, various risk influences, and the extent to which organizational or operational parameters are integrated with safety. And that spells the PRISMA, the PRISMA model. Uh, that we that we measure. Now we have, as I said, a very large database, probably one of the largest databases in the world on, on safety culture um, that is divided into various quintiles. We have companies at the bottom, we have companies at the top and uh, in across all industries. Now that tells you, uh, that gives you a comparison with different benchmarks uh, out there in industry. It's, it's, it's one thing to say, well, 60% of your employees uh, express trust in leadership. And that's why you often get the, the reports. Well, that may mean nothing because uh, in bottom industry companies, at the bottom quintile, 60% of people there express trust in, 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 in leadership. At the top company level, 85% of people express trust in leadership. I'm just using numbers. So you have to be able to compare this with reality. And that's what we do. And our comparisons are displayed in what we call heat maps. So you can see here, for instance, this is the various job levels in the organization from executive management right down to associate levels at the front. And this is how they responded in this organization. Contract, contract workers, for instance, uh, responded at lower industry levels, a uh, couple of areas in which the supervisors responded at bottom industry levels. So that's why pure percentages, will it's completely meaningless unless you have the capability to, to show it in these kind of uh, uh, heat map or, or relative terms. So when we do a survey, uh, we, you know, we can actually divide the organizations up into all kinds of uh, levels, departments, functional regions, etc., And then we ideally do a survey of up to 75, 80% of people in the organization. Um, that gives us very large uh, database to a large sample size. And it's very low on, um, on margin of error. But the real advantage here is that people participate. People feel that they've been engaged in safety. And if you purely want to do this for benchmarking purposes, we can take a small sample, stratified random sample, and that takes a lot of management of randomly selecting people to come into the survey. And you can actually use very small samples, uh, like in this case, 14%, and you can still achieve a low level of margin of error, under 5%, uh, if you do the sampling process correctly. So that's how we can actually measure uh, an organization, either comprehensively or for benchmarking purposes. Yeah, that's great. Um, and and so wh what are the, the benefits from, from going through the process and collecting and measuring this information? Well, if I go back to Prisma, uh, there's a couple of uh, taglines I put to, to the name, to the acronym of Prisma. Uh, first one is pathways for change. You get precise information uh, from this analysis, where to change, what to change, what interventions you need for the for ensuring that there's transformation happening at the right levels and at the right avenues in your organization. You, you actually dig into the risk culture. What are the sources of risk-taking behaviors in your organization? Is it uh, uh, high degrees of tolerance upstream in the organization? Of risk, or is it actual behaviors downstream uh, that, that, that 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 emanate into um, into no, emanates not the right word uh, that flow into risk taking behaviors of people? So the risk culture is what what is important. The benefit here, but very important is the intuitive measurement uh, that actually measures the risk culture. If you think about a worker out in the workplace, 
and there's a risky task to be to be completed. They do not have a rational thinking process going on at that moment in time. How committed is my company? How committed is my supervisor on a seven-point scale? It's intuitive. It is in the forefront of their minds. You have to measure that, and that's what we measure. We're the only organization that measures intuitive perceptions of people. And that's where you find the sources of risk in your organization. And that's where we target the interventions at so that the organization can create the right pathways. Very important is the benchmark capability. This is the only reliable and valid way of benchmarking against other organizations. Most organizations' databases of performance metrics are defined in terms of their, uh, their uh, definitions. Uh, many organizations fudge the information. Uh, we all know that uh, if a client wants to measure a contract provider on performance, on safety, they keep those numbers as low as possible. We can never know what the true performance of an organization is based on their metrics because the, a lot of those accidents are also uh, random events. And so how do you compare one to another? You can through the culture of the organization. And then very important is the benefit is it's actionable. You can, you can take specific actions. And we've over the years developed many interventions for the various aspects that can be an issue in organization, leadership programs, supervisor programs, employee behavioral programs, uh, risk-focused programs, uh, as a result of our work in this field, all with this idea that, well, we've, I've done the assessment, what are we gonna do next? And that is what the benefits of the survey can actually give you. It's not about the survey so much as it is how you transform culture and performance in your organization. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great, great acronym. I, I love the, you know, given my background, I love the benchmarking and, and um, you know, establishing a place that you can uh, measure your, your progress from. So um, what, uh, um, again, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but just, just to kind of reiterate, you know, what, what, what you know, industries or size of organizations or types of organizations, you know, does this apply to versus maybe some that it may not work with, just so people can get a sense of uh, whether they should be reaching out to uh, to you guys at SafeMap to uh, to do one of the, the surveys? Well, we, we conduct surveys of organizations that have sites that are 50, 60 people on the site, uh, and we can create uh, profiles for that organization. Uh, in a case of a small site, 50 people, you have to have almost everybody participate in order to have a valid sample. If you have a large organization of thousands of people, you can then reduce the sample size uh, to measure the same level of, uh, uh, of uh, re reliability and validity. So we range from that size of organization. Some of our clients are, um, one of our clients has got nearly 600,000 people in the company. Um, and but even that is is done in bite-sized surveys of small sites, bigger sites, etc. Uh, and you can slice and dice the information eventually in any which way you want. Uh, so it doesn't matter in terms of size of the organization. You can still distill it down to actual points of culture in your organization because no organization has a culture. Right. Um, all organizations have subcultures, many cultures are split around the organization's departments, job levels, etc. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, in, insight for people who, who might be uh, thinking this would be beneficial, but not sure if it's applicable for their organization. Definitely encourage you to reach out, connect with with Corey. Uh, he'll he'll walk you through the, the process in a little bit more detail and make sure that uh, your organization's a fit before uh, before undertaking anything uh, anything like this. So we're gonna do a few more um, discussions going forward, right, Corey, um, in, in the future around, you know, diving into some of the analytics and, and, and the, the database, uh, you know, so there will be more details to come, but, but definitely if, if you're interested at this point, I would encourage you, like I say, to, uh, to reach out, connect with Corey and his team, 
and they'll walk you through the the process in much more detail. Yes, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks for joining. Thank you.